and welcome to this short talk on getting good performance in Gromax. I'm Berg Hess and one of the main developers of uh, the Gromax simulation package and I'm working at KTH, the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm. So the topic of this talk is how to will answer the question how to get good performance from Gromax. So this is a, um, a topic for which one could talk for hours on many different details and many aspects that might affect performance, but I'll try to give you uh, a short overview in 15 minutes about what the most important considerations are and what you need to think of. <coughs> so it used to be originally in when uh, molecular dynamics started that the um, the parameters such as cutoffs and and other parameters had a lot of effect on the performance of your simulation. But nowadays this is um, changed and these parameters have little effect on the, on the performance. For one, because the uh, cutoffs are rather fixed now for different force fields, um, but also because we have o um, optimization in Gromax to automatically uh, adapt the way things are computed under the hood to compute the same potential but varying uh, parameters of the algorithms. Um, so in particular the particle mesh e world electrostatics which is one of the computationally expensive components especially when running at large scale in parallel. Um, that has some effect so manually you can may, uh, sometimes worth to increase the order and have a coarser the PME order and have a coarser grid to achieve uh, better scaling at large scale, but at small to medium scale, this even this is not worth it. And part of that is because we have in Gromax automated the PME tuning um, to automatically increase the the cutoff for, for real space for computing direct pair interactions, and uh, thereby we can one can make the grid the PME grid coarser to make the mesh part cheaper. So in this way, we can move work between resources or um, lower the cost of the calculation even when running on the same resource. So that's about the only thing one, one has to think of in terms of, of parameters, but even that is is uh, fine-tuning often as this is largely auto automated for you. Then the most important aspect to, to, to think of for performance in, in Gromax, but probably molecular dynamics in general, is how to map tasks in the computation, in this case in Gromax for MD run, um, to the available hardware. So and also to choose how much hardware to use. So this can have a large effect on performance, but it's often not easy to, uh, to optimize fully, although it's often not so hard to, to get a significant improvement. So first, to discuss this, we need to have some idea of, of how modern hardware looks like. So this is a very um, high-level overview of how modern hardware looks like. Um, so on the left hand side here there's a picture of a, a CPU, in this case an AMD EPIC, which has 64 physical cores in it, which are in uh, different um, uh, chips on the same, on the same um, processor here. And they're interconnected, so there's also a complex hierarchy between these cores. Um, and then you can run what's called uh, two hardware threads on each of these cores, which m gives a total of 128 hardware threads. So a hardware thread which can run an individual uh, thread of a program, uh, two of these threads can share a core, uh, thereby improving the, the throughput of your calculation. Uh, so you get a bit extra performance out of this, not so much, but it's often often worth it. So then you can have uh, up to often have two of these CPUs you can find in a node in compute centers, which means 128 physical cores in one node or 256 hardware threads, which is quite a lot. And this is only increasing. Uh, then on the right hand side here, there's a picture of a GPU. So you're probably all aware that the GPUs, which were initially developed for games, are now used a lot for calculations. And particularly in Gromax, we can make very good use of this. We have highly optimized code for that. So here's an example of an NVIDIA GPU, uh, one of the fastest ones, 2080 Ti, which has 68 streaming, streaming processors, streaming multiprocessors, which each in turn have cores in there which can do, or yeah, threads running there which can compute in parallel again. So you have very massive parallelization. 
And of these you, these you can often find two or four in a node, or maybe a single one if you have your own workstation. <coughs> so this allows, this um, such kind of hardware enables massive parallelism on the computation, and you need software to take you to make good use of that, which Gromax has been putting a lot of work into. Then on top of this, you could have multiple nodes of these connected together in the network, in the network um, like a supercomputer, for instance. Um, so the question is now, how do I run um, Gromax efficiently on such hardware? So then we first need to discuss how we actually parallelize to understand what the different options do and what you can do. So um, there's at the finest level, there's thread parallelization, both inside the CPU, but also GPU. So this the threads are used to uh, execute code in parallel. O on the, you can do this on the same core, as I said already, with this uh, um, running two uh, threads on one, on one core, which is called hyperthreading on Intel and SMT's shared um, oh, I forgot the, where the abbreviation stands for, but anyhow, um, so on, on AMD and other processors you can also find this. So then uh, the advantage here is that all threads in the process have access to all data in this process. So you can have, for the processor I showed before, up to 128 threads, um, which can all share the same data. So this allows rather fast access to the data, but it still takes time to move the data from one core to another. So for Gromax, Gromax uses the popular um, interface OpenMP for thread parallelization to um, enable running um, different software threads on the hardware threads here. Then on the other hand, there's uh, what's called message passing parallelization. So here, processes running on cores either in the same node or in different nodes also, they can exchange data by passing me messages, which goes then either th through the processor or over the motherboard or between different nodes through the network. Um, so this enables you to run in, uh, in parallel also between nodes, um, but then you need to explicitly pass around the data that you want to communicate. So Gromax uses MPI, which is by now the standard library for this, or also a built-in thread MPI library. So this is built into uh, MD run, built into Gromax and MD run, so you can make use of the, of the features that we built on top of MPI, also not using different processes, but using threads. So that is within one node then, since you know it's, 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 it's the same within the same process. Um, so this is convenient because this allows much easier interaction and also automation for the parallelization if you're running on a single node, which is often the case. Okay, so then we need algorithms to, to, to parallelize your calculation. So we have, at the highest level, we have what, what's called domain decomposition. So in, in Gromax, this is done in 3D. So here's an example of a box. This could be a simulation box, which in this case is divided in three by two by two domains, which is 12 in total, um, where we have local atoms residing in a domain, for instance, here in uh, domain zero, and then we need in the way the parallelization is set up, information from, um, or atoms from um, domains in a forward direction to compute pair interactions and bond interactions with atoms on domain zero, but also between communicate actually, but that's going into too much detail here. So we need to communicate before computing the, the non-local forces, we need to communicate uh, what's called the halo, this shaded area from other processors and then we need to communicate the forces back after we computed them. <coughs> um, in addition to this, we have what, uh, for the parallelizing PME, we have what's called multiple program, multiple data parallelization. So in, in, the, in the standard case, each domain, each uh, process on each MPI rank would be running the same code in the same order, so that means if we need to do PME, the particle mesh Ewald calculation, there we have full interactions, all electrost all atoms see each other through electrostatic interactions. We need to communicate between all these ranks, which in this picture, for instance, are eight MPI ranks. So you get a lot of communication. But the Gromax has the option to run the PME calculation on separate ranks, which is usually the load of that is about a quarter or so. So that means we can dedicate two MPI ranks to doing the PME and six to doing the rest which means we first need to send the data over to those PME ranks, the coordinates, but then we have very little communication left since only two ranks need to communicate, and then we need to send back the forces we computed. So this significantly reduces the 
the communication in PME, which is otherwise communication bound. So that's a nice feature which Gromax can use to improve the performance. Okay, then we need to map somehow the domains we have to the hardware. So this, this can be done in many ways. So here's an, uh, a picture which shows, um, for instance, um, the red domain being mapped to part of the first CPU and one GPU, the blue to crossing between two CPUs in the same node and one G and the blue GPU and then the green part of the green GPU and the yellow to the next GPU and the next node and so on. Um, so each domain can use max one GPU, but you could also share. Um, so this is not fully optimal since you don't actually would want domains shared between different uh, CPUs. So you'd rather um, make sure that each domain is using a whole CPU or part of a CPU, not sharing between, but that's uh, that's a detail here. So this is this mapping uh, has a lot of effect on the performance since you can imagine that the communication is affected a lot by how you do this. So that's a thing to think of. Um, Okay, so then how do we actually do this in practice? So if we have thread MPI, we can run on a single node, that only. So then you do a GMX MD run, and then you can set the number of MPI ranks with the anti-MPI option, and number of OpenP threads with anti-OpenMP. But you can also give nothing, no options at all here, and it would automate, cho automatically choose something, which is, could be reasonable or, or not. So we try to do our best to, to give reasonable performance there, but it can be hard to estimate that. Then for real MPI, you actually have to use an MPI library and use usually MPI run and then explicitly give the number of ranks to the uh, command now often called GMX MPI, MD run, and then you can still set the number of threads if you want to, but that can also be automated. So both these commands have the same effect on MD run. So internally under the hood, the algorithms are the same, but in one case, in the thread MPI case, it's run, we run MPI with threads and in another case with processes. Um, so as I said, with ThreadMPI, we have full, full automation for the number of ranks and number of threads. Um, so you can just run, do GMX MD run and, and hope for the best. But I'll show now that that doesn't give the best result in all cases. So here's uh, an example of an example system so, um, where I show the end of the log file. So at the end of the log file, you can find information about performance, a lot more than I show here, but you can look for that yourself if you have a log file. Um, so here we're going to look at a, a membrane protein system, which is about 140,000 atoms. I run this on a, a machine in our cluster that has a 12-core CPU, 24 th hardware threads, and two RTX 2080 Ti GPUs, with default MD run settings in this case. So that gives you four domains and six threads per rank. So now one can get a performance. So you see the performance here, which is a, um, 58 0.7 nanoseconds per day. And then here there's the breakdown of, of all the parts of the calculation here um, given. So one issue here is that when running on the GPU, we actually can't time how long the GPU is busy for, for various technical reasons, this is an issue. So, but what we can look, we can only time on the CPU and there we can see, for instance, how long the, C the CPU is waiting for the GPU, that's this red line here. So you see it's 0.1% of the time waiting on the GPU. So that means that the, the GPU doesn't spend more time on the calculation uh, than the CPU needs while it's busy. Um, but we can't see how much of the time the, 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 the GPU is actually busy here. That's difficult to estimate without profiling. Um, so the question is, is in this machine, which has actually two very large GPUs compared to the CPU, are we using it optimally? And the answer there is, is actually no. So we can run different setups. So in this case, I run, for instance, a single GPU, so I can remove one of the, the use of one of the of the of the GPUs with the option dash GPU ID. And now actually we see if we do that, we still use 12 threads, or if we use the all cores, but now one thread per core, as MD run does by default, we actually get a much higher performance of 98.6 nanoseconds per day. So this the 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 system was actually um, uh, the, the GPUs were actually quite idle and there's a lot of overhead in running the, the domain composition in this case. So the performance actually goes up when not using one GPU and using only the other one. So if we actually look at the, at the log file, we can now see that there are 16.6 time percent wait time. So now actually the CPU spends uh, less time in the force calculation than the GPU. So we need to wait a bit. Now we can also use half of the, of the CPU cores while you're running six threads and then we actually, the performance goes down to 82 nanoseconds per day. So that we get 10 points, uh, so we get a bit less wait time, you see here. I've cut out the rest. So the performance goes down a bit, but now actually we could run a second simulation on the other GPU, on the other half of the CPU. Um, 
ah, I forgot to to print the performance numbers in this in this slide, but then you actually get 70, uh, a bit more than 70 nanoseconds per day. So that's not much worse than 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 this 82, but uh, you get two times 70 is about 150 nanoseconds per day, which is a lot faster than this 58 here, but then spread over two simulations. So if you want to maximize throughput then, so that's as a, opposed to having the maximum performance in nanoseconds per day of a single run, you it's often good to run a single simulation per GPU, or even better, run two simulations per GPU, even to use, uh, utilize, maximally utilize the, the GPU, because the GPU cannot be computing all the time in one simulation. So if you have two share, you can actually get better uh, utilization. Then you need to take care that the simulations are mapped well to the hardware. So I've done this manually in the example I gave before, but you can have MD Run do this for you by using the multi dir option of GMX MPI, which allows you to run multiple simulations in separate directories with a single command. So then you can, if the, if the simulations are similar, you can use the get maximum throughput and full um, best utilization of the hardware. So then to conclude, there's many aspects to this performance. So I, I, there's the question, how many MPI ranks should I use, which I haven't really gone into. You can also look at that, although MD Run does a, default, a reasonable estimation with using Fed MPI. What domain compositions should I use? So you can change that as well with the DD option. How should I use separate PME ranks? As I said, that's the MPME option. And then what parts of the calculation should I run on the, on the GPU? So the non-bond that always needs to run there, but for the rest you can choose uh, for a lot of components. You have to, you can look at the MD run help to see what you can specify there. Um, PME can only run on a single GPU for the moment, but in the 2022 release we have an experimental GPU parallelization, PME GPU parallelization with CUDA. That has the promise to improve performance a lot if you can parallelize PME over GPUs. And then as I showed, yeah, should you should I have multiple runs share node or GPUs, which can also improve performance. So finally, there's um, a lot more information in the Gromax manual at this link here for manual.gromax.org, which describes everything in detail, also the concepts and the different things that might affect performance and how one can look at that. And then there's uh, soon there's a, a webinar by Excel on the parallelization and the improvements we've made there by Silar Paul on April 5. If you're interested in that, have a look at bioxcel.eu for the link. Um, thank you for your attention. <laughs>